Hi, uh, it's Kate here and I'm going to be talking about books, but more specifically book covers because I am someone that definitely judges books by their covers and while that is something that we're told not to do, I just can't help it. Because I'm someone that likes aesthetically pleasing things, so why not buy the nicest book that you can find? So this will be a collection of my favourite book covers that I currently own. Granted a few of them will be Charlotte's because technically they could be mine because I did buy them but they were presents so technically they are hers. First up we have Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange and this one is the restored penguin edition. So it's on the spine. And to be perfectly honest, it should be totally boring because literally it is just an orange on the front, but it's retro and it's just cool. Like, just simple. I mean, the texture of it is even nice. It's just... I just like it. I don't know why, I can't really describe why, I just think it's because of just the simplicity of it, but... It is what it is. I mean, it's like modern art. Some people absolutely hate modern art and like, ooh, there's no talent in that, but this just looks cool. This looks cool. And next up we have Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami. Probably said that wrong. <laughs> but again, it's the circle. It's just the simplicity of the cover again. I mean, there is a bit of a strangeness in it that this girl is floating in what looks like a restaurant or a supermarket, I'm not quite sure. And I don't know how that corresponds to the story because it's about a teacher and a student who meet again many years later and form a strange relationship with each other. So I have no idea how that corresponds to the story, but it just it, it's a pretty cover and it's an interesting cover because you're thinking why is she floating like that? Is this a kind of surrealist book? Maybe? Who knows? But yeah, I thought it was quite pretty. Saw this in the bookshop, thought I don't care what this book is about, I just like it. So let's buy it. Okay, um, first and only non-fiction book in the collection because most non-fiction books are a bit boring looking, let's just face it. And so this one is Human Universe by Professor Brian Cox and Andrew Cohen. And the reason why I like this one is because of the connotations that it has to the creation of man by um, Michelangelo, which is on the Sistine Chapel, where God's finger is touching Adam's finger, or nearly touching like that. And yeah, so it's kind of cool the way it's exploring the evolution of man from ape to astronaut. So. I mean, this book probably covers a lot of that ground. I haven't read it yet because I'm rubbish. <laughs> and I've got so many books at home that I haven't read. I don't think I've read any of these books that I've got down here as well. Girl needs to read more. But yeah, I just thought it's an interesting, I mean, again, it's another simple one, but it's just cool, the symbolism of how man has evolved from basic ape to sophisticated, intelligent, and adventurous astronaut that is going to explore the depths of the universe maybe one day and find out that we're not alone. Look, maybe. Yes, another cover by, and this one is The Honours by Tim Clare. I didn't really know what it was about in the shop. I just saw it from across the room and thought, wow, that looks really quite pretty with this kind of hieroglyphic eye that's almost like the eye of Horus from Egyptology and it's got a little flap that comes off and then it reveals this very mysterious and intricate design that's almost art deco and it's got like this this bumblebee again with that eye in the middle and then you've got minotaur like characters in these little circles going around the circle and it's just very decadent and mysterious looking and it's, it describes it, the honours is a dark, glittering and dangerously unputdownable novel which invites you to enter a thrilling and fantastical world unlike any other. So yeah, so I saw the book cover, then read that bit and I was like, you're mine. And it came home with me. And it's here. 
The Vegetarian by Hank Kang. So, I mean, this cover is just beautiful. I mean, when you put it into the light, it's got a metallic spiny detail as if it's a leaf. And then you've got the severed wing of a bird. I think it's either a dove or a swan, so it's quite um, innocent connotation. So something's been severed, so there's a change that goes on in this book. And pretty much that is what the book is about. And, I mean, one of the snippets on the back, it says, A beautiful, unsettling novel in three acts about rebellion and taboo, violence and eroticism, and the twisting metamorphosis of a soul. And that last bit, a twisting metamorphosis of a soul, just sounds so intriguing. So, I mean, this probably symbolises the loss of innocence. And I think this is what the book is about a bit. Like, obviously, there is something to do with a vegetarian in that, I believe. The woman, because it's set in South Korea, um, in a predominantly meat-eating society, so when the main character decides to become a vegetarian, it's a bit like, what are you doing? Who are you? You've betrayed your country. So she steps away from societal norms and severs a part of her to become something else and it's a twisting metamorphosis of a soul so it might be disturbing in some points and there might be violence in it so the severed bird wing could also represent absolute violence like I don't know just looks awesome it sounded quite awesome when I read the synopsis and a lot of people have said good things about it, so yeah, it's a bonus that the cover looks really great. I mean, I would prefer it not to have that little square up there, so it was just fully the the metallic vein background, but I suppose it's important to show that it's won an award. And it was the winner of the Man Booker International Prize 2016, so it's pretty recent, pretty thin, so I probably should get to this as soon as possible, and yeah. Pretty. The next book on my list is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It's one of the seminal science fiction novels and is part of the Penguin's English Library collection and some of their covers are just divine. And this particular one is very kind of pastel-y and then you've got the anatomical hearts symbolise the heart of the story which is a, a, a mad scientist chopping people apart and putting them back together and raising them from the dead. And it just makes it look pretty. It makes you think, oh, this is unassuming, this is going to be quite a, a delightful read. But who knows, we'll find out. Can you believe Mary Shelley was 18 when she wrote this? Like, girl, you go. We've got a collection of hardbacks, which I'll show you individually, and they're all from the Penguin Classics hardcover editions. Um, two of them are not my own, they are Charlotte's, but I'm going to class them as mine because I bought them for her. So, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Legendary man, legendary book. Again, it's another gothic novel, so we all know that this one belongs to me though I am yet to read it, but October is coming up, Halloween and all, so for the book club we are doing a anything gothic read. So literally this, Frankenstein, probably Dracula, The Monk, anything I can get my hands on that is gothic will be read in October. But back to this cover, um, it's got peacock feathers all over it, so that kind of ties in immediately with the story of Dorian Gray. Proud, beautiful man who succumbs to his pride and bad stuff happens. So yeah, and it's very dark and kind of menacing but beautiful. So again, that's about the duality of Dorian Gray. So on the outside, he is this charming, beautiful man, but then beneath the veneer lays the debauchery and the grotesqueness of his character that is reflected in the magic, magical, I don't know if it's magical, but the sinister painting that he keeps locked away. Uh, yeah, I just love the height, the kind of mythology of Dorian Gray, like, um, if everyone hasn't watched it, but Penny Dreadful is one of my favourite TV shows ever, and the way they kind of brought Dorian Gray to life on that show as well was just like, I need to read this, I need to read it. 
So yeah, so October is coming. I will be reading this beautiful book. We've got Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, and it's in another one of the Penguin Classics hardcovers. And it's just stunning, and the, the detail on it is of the binoculars, so there's a particular part in the story. My reference is to the 2012 film starring Kira Knightley by Joe Wright, and it's the, actually I probably shouldn't say what it's about, but it's, it's to do with a, a massive turning point in the novel. I won't say, but if you've seen the film, you'll know what I'm talking about, and if you've read the book, obviously you'll know what I'm talking about as well. But, oh, just the the direction in that film is just stunning, because it's like it's a stage play, sort of like a musical, and just the dancing in it. It should be a beautiful read, as well as a beautiful cover. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Yes, it's stunning. I mean, look at all those crazy flamingos and the pinkness of it, it's just pretty. And again, it, it's it's a classic, so you've got to invest in the good covers, the beautiful covers, because, you know, it's just going to be awesome because it's a classic. I don't know why I'm saying that. It's pretty, I mean the Flamingos, everyone knows the story of Alice in Wonderland. There is a scene where they're playing croquet with flamingos. Yes, again, I'm yet to read it, but technically this isn't my book, so... And Charlotte's read it, because she's like, how much into it? I will be soon and often there to read the classic that is Alice in Wonderland. It just looks pretty. I mean, I saw it and thought, she would love that because it's pink, it's flamingo and Alice in Wonderland. It's just delightful. And last of the hard covers is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And this is a vintage classic. And again, this one doesn't belong to me. It's actually Charlotte's because I bought it for her for her birthday one year, many years ago. And the reason why I bought it, because there was about 10 different versions of um, Gatsby in the bookshop because, again, it's another legendary, revered piece of literature. And I chose this one because it was exclusively designed by Tiffany's. So it just embodies the, the 20s like nothing else I've ever seen. It's just so art deco. It's and even inside sleeve just looks beautiful like you've got this green decadent pattern it's just I mean they design jewelry so of course they can design books as well and yes very successfully done well done to me and last but no means least my favorite editions of books ever in the history of books no, that's probably an overstatement, but... So, I mean, you've got George Orwell's 1984 and Animal Farm. And, I mean, just look at them. They're beautiful. Like, the colour scheme is divine. You've got the red, the black, and the, the yellowy gold. And so, I mean, first of all, look at this. This just looks like a Soviet Union propaganda poster and that's because Animal Farm is an allegorical tale analysing the injustices of the Soviet Union and it, I mean it even says on the back Animal Farm history of a revolution that went wrong is George Orwell's brilliant satire on the corrupting influence of power and so then obviously the, the propaganda posters were corruptions of power designed to make everyone feel like they were following the right leader that was going to make them empowered, strong, and so that is very much the contents of this rather tiny book, but it just it looks so amazing. And yes, it was a little expensive for such a size of book, but you can't put a price on beauty. Shepherd Fairy, that's a pretty cool name, but that is the cover design is by Shepherd Fairy. Thank you Shepherd Fairy for this beautiful artwork, Significance of the Windmill. And I remember watching a cartoon of this when me and Charlotte were children, 
and there was a moment where one of the pigs got killed and we were just like traumatised by it, but yeah. And then you got 1984, again playing with that colour, not so much with the Soviet poster but because of the windmills. I remember watching a cartoon of this when me and Charlotte were children and there was a moment where one of the pigs got killed and we were just like traumatised by it, but yeah. And then you got 1984, again playing with that colour, not so much with the Soviet poster. First published in 1949, so this is a look to the future. Uh... Oh. 1984 is George Orwell's terrifying vision of a totalitarian future in which everything and everyone is slave to a tyrannical regime. Again, so it's playing on the paranoia of that era and obviously 1949 the war was but a few years over so everything was kind of still in that hostile time so the the eye I mean it's big brother watching you everyone knows that's part of the novel but it's just the suspiciousness of it like it looks like it's looking through a keyhole and oh, I just I just, I mean, when you put them together, you just think, ah, oh, beautiful. So, I am very happy with these ones. They are probably my favourite, as I said earlier. Specifically the pig one. Because of the way it just definitely looks like a Soviet Union poster. We've done it! Yeah, so I think that is all of them. I mean, no doubt there'll probably be more next week because I just seem to have an obsession with buying books. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below there somewhere. See you around.